And Jacksonville City Council has five at-large seats. They're elected citywide. Each of the city's 14 districts is also represented by a council member elected by voters in that district. So following the unitary election last month, the top two candidates are up for election May 14th. And Group 1 is an open seat. The incumbent councilwoman Anna lopez Broche ran for mayor rather than seeking re-election. So joining us right now, the candidates for that particular uh, seats in council candidates Terrence Freeman and Lisa King. Uh, each of you has been on our show before, so thank you very much for that. I do want to introduce you to our audience, though. So Lisa King is a Democrat, uh, has been chair of the Jacksonville Planning Commission as well as the chair of the Duval Democratic Party. Uh, professional Lisa Lisa is a senior vice president at Langton Consulting. Mm -hmm. Terrence Freeman, currently on uh, City Council, appointed to City Council District 10 last year by Governor Rick Scott, replacing suspended Reggie Brown professionally. Uh, Terrence has worked as a teacher, principal, coach, in addition to being Executive Council Assistant and Political Affairs Manager at Jack's Chamber. So here are the candidates, and I've asked each of them to provide us uh, three topics to discuss. We're going to start here with one that overlaps. That's uh, public safety or crime. Uh, Lisa, I know that your campaign website says... Uh, you feel crime in the city has gotten worse, worse in the past four years. So here's the question. Why do you believe that? And then what do you want to do about it if you're elected to mm -hmm. city council? Well, um, the statistics bear it out. We have the uh, highest violent crime rate in the state of Florida, more than any other large city in Florida. And it's because we've under, investigate, under in, um, invested in children and families, and particularly those in crisis for decades. And um, we know what works. Uh, there was a study by JCCI in 2006. Um, that, out of that grew the Jacksonville journey. Um, the city invested in uh, those programs that we know work and our violent crime rate came down. It's since uh, kind of political will has evaporated for funding those programs, um, the violent crime rate has come back up. There's been um, some work done over the last year to try to address those issues, but much more needs to be done. Yeah, Terrence, what are your thoughts here? Do you agree with the assessment that crime is worse now than it's been uh, previous to these four years? Uh, thanks, Kent. Uh, definitely crime is a concern, uh, and we know that in any level of government, all levels of government, public safety is our number one responsibility. Uh, I am proud uh, to have the endorsement of Sheriff Mike Williams, as well as our former Sheriff Congressman John Rutherford. I believe that they endorse me because they see the work that I've done on council. Uh, which was evident in the vote to make sure that JSO and the men and women of blue had the necessary tools to keep us safe. However, we can't stop with just policing it. We have to think prevention and intervention. And I'm proud to say I was one of the original members of the Jack Sterney Oversight Committee, which is a committee that was crime intervention, prevention, and reentry. I walked the streets and experienced some of these things that we're dealing with right now. But we've also done some things as a council member. Uh, Three pieces of legislation I filed, of which two specifically deal with prevention. One being investing money into a park to make sure that it creates a safer atmosphere for kids to go to. And the other one is a teen center that we're, erect, we're gonna erect off of Moncrief, not too far from that, uh, the location of Red Pole where three people tragically lost their lives. Yeah. So it sounds like there's some agreement on, in order to attack violent crime, we need to do more investment in children or children's programs. Is that accurate? Well, I, I, I see that there is an agreement, but the difference is this. One has done it. I have been on the street. I am currently on the council working on these issues. And so from day one of being reelected, if reelected, I will be able to lead on those issues. There will be no plain catch up. Yeah, Lisa, give me your well, thoughts Well, I come from a law enforcement family and um, I have the endorsement of the Fraternal Order of Police in this race. So I don't think I'm going to be playing catch up on, on this issue, but also I feel that um, while um, small moves are uh, certainly valuable and, and certainly valued, um, we need to have a much more comprehensive approach if we're going to address this issue significantly. Um, in a city of this size, um, one teen center and one park um, investment is not going to solve this problem. Not enough. Well, one of the things that city council has agreed to recently was voting in favor of, hey, let's try this uh, cure violence program. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Is that a reasonable step? Is it something you would support uh, if you're on council? Well, uh, Cure Violence is a, um, a program that's been used around the country and it is, is proven to be effective, but one has to understand what it's about. It's particularly focused on addressing gun violence. 
And, um, and it, it comes at it like um, gun violence is a disease. And so what they do is they train people from within the community to address people surrounding a violent act as soon as it happens. So they go to emergency rooms and talk to families. They, they go to the neighborhoods where incidents occur and talk to the residents because what they don't want is retaliation to happen. So they treat it like a virus yeah. that's going to spread. Do you, do you like that plan? I, I do, but it's certainly, some people are touting that that alone is going to solve this problem. It is only going to address uh, uh, problems from getting worse. It's certainly not going to deal with the core problems that we know need to be addressed. So just state real quickly, what are those core problems? And I want to give uh, Terrence Freeman a chance. Well, it's, um, we've, we've underinvested in parts of our city for decades. And um, the sidewalks and parks and streets don't have the same level of attention in parts of our city. There's underlying poverty issues that haven't been addressed. Um, we haven't, we haven't really taken those issues seriously. The fact that we have employees of the city of Jacksonville that make less than $12 an hour, um, we know that nobody can raise a family on, on those kind of wage rates. So we have to address all of those issues. We have to address them holistically. Yeah. So I want to give you a chance to yes. talk about both of those things, I guess, including what do you think are the core issues that get us to a place right. where we're talking about violence in our community? Yes, and, and I completely agree with the cure of violence uh, as a tool, another tool uh, to reduce violent crime. Uh, we know here in Jacksonville, and as council members, we, we passed legislation that uh, put money out on the street, about $300,000 for smaller organizations, uh, the ones that are out there doing the work. And that's what Cure Violence does, is it gives those folks an opportunity to get some new training to go out and address these issues. Um, I completely agree. This is, we didn't get here overnight. Uh, we didn't get to this point overnight, and we're not going to get rid of it overnight. But what you have are folks that are dedicated to it. Um, and as the council with the, 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 the new committee or the task force on crime and right. prevention that's formed and it's going to reduce it. Um, when you think of the strategy that under Councilman Bowman, when we came up with a strategic plan over the next several years, which will ensure that from one council president to the next, from one mayor to the next, that we're going to continue following on these, these examples. And, and I completely agree about as a the council member for an area that is very challenged. That's why we were proud to take over $500,000 to build that teen center. I'm also applying for more federal grants to put things in that are going to enrich these kids, these boys and girls, when they come to it. Yeah. Talking through some of these issues, we talked a lot about public safety and crime uh, just a moment ago in that segment. I want to talk now about uh, education, and hopefully we'll get to talk about jobs as well. Here's the question, and uh, Terrence, let me ask you first. Uh, how can city council develop or improve, I guess, the educational opportunities that children in our county need? Thank you. Uh, well, as the only member on council who can say that I taught in a classroom and was a principal, I feel that I'm prepared to lead in this discussion on council. Um, also, my beautiful bride, Rachel, uh, is currently a teacher uh, and taught for 12 years in Duval County Schools as in a Title I school. Um, so this is a topic we're familiar with. We understand that the biggest decision that a parent's going to face is where they're going to send their kids. Um, it's my desire that the place that they choose, their first option, be their neighborhood school. But when that option falls short, I want to make sure and ensure that every kid and every zip code has a right to a, to a quality education. And those are the things that I'm going to continue to work on and fight for. So we've, we've uh, I want to hear Lisa's perspective and then I might follow up on that. What do you think about uh, providing the educational opportunities that kids in our county really need, our city needs? Well, as you know, Kent, those, um, uh, education is a primary responsibility of the school board. Right. not of the city council. Um, I'm a graduate of our public schools. All three of my children graduated from our public schools. I got a fabulous education here in Jacksonville. Um, what I want to work on is the way that uh, the city council could be a partner uh, to our school board. Um, it, it, s things as simple as making sure that every child has a safe route to school, that sidewalks and roadways are properly maintained so that uh, children and parents can get to school, to and from school safely. Um, but also that children are going to school prepared so that uh, some of the topics we talked about earlier in terms of crime prevention, some of that investment in early childhood so that every child goes to school uh, prepared to learn because not every child has the same um, opportunity um, from their home life. And so sometimes government has to step in and uh, be of assistance. Yeah. And so that's, that's probably where I would have gone. I think you just mm -hmm. answered that, but there's a school board and they've got a responsibility. City Council, what we want to see or you want to see is working better with or together with uh, the school board. Let's talk about jobs in Jacksonville and uh, Lisa, I guess I'll ask you first since I just asked Terrence this question previously first. Let's talk about jobs and, and how does the city uh, attract more jobs and really the kinds of jobs that exactly. the city wants? 
Exactly. That's, you know, that's something that has impacted my own family. Um, my eldest child graduated from Stanton, went, or, went to University of Florida, got an engineering degree, was recruited by the Navy to go into their submarine service. Um, he decided uh, last October to enter the reserves and come out and go find employment in the private sector. Sure. And um, Jacksonville could not match the offers that he got elsewhere in the country and elsewhere in Florida. So my son and my two grandchildren are now in Tampa. How a Navy town can't give a Navy man the same kind of opportunity. So, um, you know, we have, we've, we've done the work through the Elevate Northeast Florida study. We've identified the key industries where we need to attract, uh, attract jobs that grow into careers that have those kinds of um, opportunities for people to make decent salaries. But we also have to make sure that people that are here are trained and ready to take those jobs. Yeah, so Terrence, I want to hear your yeah. thoughts and, and some of your background yes. includes working at the Chamber of Commerce where you're Absolutely. concerned with business and, development. Right? Yes, sir, and I, and I believe that this still ties back to school and education as well because we know many of these jobs that we're recruiting folks for, when they make the decision where they're going to live, it's going to be based off of a school. Um, and I'm proud to say that I've met with school board members, several of them, as well as the superintendent to continue this discuss discussion of how can we be a better option? Like how can we be the option for these jobs? Look, Jacksonville, our economy is booming. Um, right now, we're at about a 3.5% unemployment rate, which is, was below the national average, I believe. Um, I'm proud to have been endorsed by the business community, the Jacks Chamber, the manufacturers, as well as the associations of builders. Um, and I believe that they chose me because they understand that I see government as an opportunity to get out of the way to allow businesses to flourish, to flourish. And by doing that, we understand that then these companies can come in and as I've heard, provide us with these jobs, high paying jobs, to give us a chance to increase our tax base, which then allows us to address issues like infrastructure, roadways, sidewalks, parks, all those things that improve our quality of life. Yeah, well, we know that uh, each of you who's running for city council, and you've already run in one election, and now you're running for this one coming up uh, here in just a few weeks in May, uh, it's because you, you love the city and you want to serve the city. So I appreciate the time, and, and I appreciate the chance just to have this discussion where the people who are going to be voting, hopefully there's a bigger turnout than uh, there was in this last election here, but uh, that we'd be able to hear your thoughts, hear your ideas on uh, what you want to do if you get the chance to serve or, or go back to city council. Lisa King, Terrence Freeman, thanks so much. Appreciate your time today.